So hi everybody, welcome to ICAP Talk uh, with our um, panel today. Uh, Madam uh, ataupun Cik Emalina, Aimi Idris. Okay, yes. so <laughs> hello. Uh, hello, how are you? So I'm just going to have a, a brief introduction about you and then we can start this session. Eh? So uh, I'm going to read the... Uh, uh, regarding uh, her background, Emalina will share a little bit, uh, share the different path available for a fulfilling creative career and even some insight and tips from her 15 year experience in creative industry. So um, for the students, um, what uh, are you thinking? Where are you going? So she will share with you her experience um, if you want to go into agency or in-house even um, considering doing freelance there are many career paths to venture into after graduation but what would be the best career path for you you know, sometimes we think that oh i want to do freelance but maybe it's not suitable for me maybe a working with agency is suitable for me or for you so we can uh, listen to her tips and her experience and you can consider or the choices can be intimidating and overwhelming but she will uh, share with you her uh, 15 year knowledge yeah and then please prepare while, while you're listening to her try to um, construct some questions so we can have uh, her um, explain or share with you um, what to do next all right, so I'll pass this floor to uh, Che Emalina to um, start her session. All right, so this session will be Creative Career Talk, Graphic Communication Design Talk. Okay, right. Assalamualaikum um, and good evening to everyone. Um, I just <laughs> got off from work and it has been a very hectic week for me so that's why I put some part now for I look really really uh, barai <laughs> but yeah for tonight uh, I just want to take this opportunity after being invited by uh, Madam ha Hanim to share a bit of my experience actually my career journey and maybe uh, you guys can have some insights um, or apply to where you want to go ahead in your future career but before I start Start my presentation. Maybe I would like to know more about the audience uh, listening in for tonight. Um, mostly, are the students here graphic course at or other course line? Madam Hanu, good. Okay. Um, I think most of the students are a mixture of design student or mm -hmm. arts, art and design students. Some of them are um, taking graphic communication, others taking uh, measuring new media, product okay. design. I think we have some music student as well. Music, oh, I'm not sure. Wow, about, music, cool. Uh, I'm not sure about um, drama and theater if they join, but hopefully we have some other departments joining as well. Because we, we have five departments in School of the Arts. And mm -hmm. hopefully uh, there are um, fine arts, drama, theatre and music also joining uh, the session to mm -hmm. take a look what's happening. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, um, and mostly, is it final year students or it's mixed from different... Um... I think there should be mix of uh, mostly final year students mm -hmm. and there will be mix of um, first year, second year and third year students. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll start. But before uh, um, I share my screen, um, apologies as my eyesight may be not looking at the screen because an hour earlier I have I faced with a major technical difficulty where I could not see anything on my screen, so I have to connect to a TV which is behind my laptop. So you see me looking at the back instead of the screen like this because I, I cannot see. I see. Okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So let me share my screen. Okay. 
okay, hold on. I will press and I did not attach my power adapter. But you guys can still listen to me because I'm on a Bluetooth speaker. So what I'm going to share, share tonight is more of my career journey. Uh, but even though I am currently uh, an in-house designer, but I have grown and expand my career from just a graphic designer to a multidisciplinary designer. And I've been in many design disciplines throughout my 15 year career. So even though uh, I'm focusing a lot of corporate as a corporate creative, but um, throughout my talk for today, for tonight, um, I'll give you guys some tips on what to prepare or what to expect throughout your career. So a bit about me, my name is Emalina Aimi. Guys can just call me Amy. I'm the head of creative in an oil and gas company. Um, <laughs> you know, the our Malaysian um, oil and gas company and my office is in the Twin Tower. So I could not um, say I'm representing my company because this is just a personal sharing and not really representing the company that I'm working with. So I have um, actually, okay, this presentation was presented five years ago. So now I have 15 years experience as a designer. I was an exco member of Riga, which is a graphic design association of Malaysia. Um, the Malaysian representative for Adobe Max 2018. Apart from my uh, professional life, I'm also a surfer, diver, adventurer. Um, apart from being just creative and you guys, if you have social media, Instagram, you guys can follow me at Emma Travelina, uh, where I share a bunch of my travels and adventures. So this is my favorite quote by Massimo Vignelli. Massimo Vignelli is one of a legendary designer. Um, he's a uh, started as a graphic designer, but really have evolved from product design, um, uh, branding, and many other things. And he was the one who designed um, New York subway map. You know, New York subway they have many lines, and it is a very confusing map for um, the users of the subway to understand and Massimo Vignelli made it to be easy to read, to understand, and it has been the standard for all train maps that you see today, like the ones um, in our, okay, I know you guys at Penang, but in KL, we have the rapid KL map where it connects all the tr public transportation like um, LRT, MRT, and other public transport into one map. And it's easy for people to understand the connectivity from one station to the station. And that was originally designed by Massimo, that kind of standard. So one of his favorite quotes um, is, um, the life of a designer is a life of fight. Fight against the ugliness. like. A doctor fights against disease for us. Um, the visual disease is what we have around and what we try to do is cure it somehow with design. And for me, it's not just making things beautiful, but making things to be easily understand, to be practical. So this is our role as a designer. And I always stick to this. And what people always think, huh, designer, you design. Uh, logo design, yeah, uh, ala uh, yang buat kala kala design kat computer tu. But actually, our role is more than that, and uh, we are fighting the visual disease. So the journey. Okay, I can see many requests coming in in my Instagram, but it's private. I'll um add you guys later. Okay, <laughs> okay, the journey. 
um, how I started to be a designer. Um, just sharing lah, you know, like um, typical uh, Asian parents who expect us to be a professional, like a doctor, engineer. Uh, but when I was 16, I already know I want to be a designer. And my parents was, was like, no, takkan nak jadi designer nanti bila, eh, like I want to study graphic design, but my parents did not let me because um, this was like, what, 20 years ago. <laughs> did not um, believe there will be a job when I graduated. They don't see a future for this um, course. It's because well, maybe that time um, parents were not exposed or aware of a designer career path, but I, I don't know about your parents now. I hope they are more aware that what we designer do uh, can really make change um, and impact, <laughs> make an impact. Uh, but what I did back then was um, I wanted to join a multimedia university. So I set an appointment with the dean of the faculty. This is what, this is what, right after SPM. So I told my parents, uh, oh, the dean wants to meet you <laughs> because I emailed the dean and with my email back then, qt2ts at hotmail.com. Um, email budak-budak sangat <laughs> as a 17 year old. Uh, I told the team, oh, my parents don't let me to be, to join this course because they see, don't see a future career. But the dean was really nice. And macam melayan this 17 year old girl email and uh, agreed to meet my parents. So I bring my parents to the university and let the dean convince my parents and that's how I get to study in um, multimedia university. I graduated, um, I studied in faculty of creative multimedia uh, and my majoring is advertising design. So uh, four years in uh, MMU where I learned everything from my foundation year were learning the basic of arts. I learned all different like Drawing with um, charcoal and painting with acrylic, watercolor, uh, only that's my, so my first only and I to be in um, digital and learn basic of Illustrator, Photoshop, and all the software skills. Okay, so right after graduated, after having uh learning all the basics of designs i actually i started freelancer during my final year because <laughs> um being in mmu it was quite costly because doing projects we need to print a lot of stuff by many art supplies so doing freelance freelancing is like my side job um to get some um extra income to cover back my student life so i okay one thing about freelancer is how do you charge how do you charge your work and i was not confident at first um i still remember when my first job was just among my friends and doing their assignments <laughs> these are, are not business, but marketing uh, students who wants their assignments or project to be different so i helped them to do their poster or videos uh, but i don't know how to charge them and that time there were um isn't any uh, cost uh, guideline or anything so i did a butter <laughs> butter service like okay i'll do your presentation design but cover my breakfast lunch dinner so i get free meals for the week when i do um some other um students work but from there, I already got a lot of portfolio of work. Uh, uh, when I do a lot of design projects, I can include it in my portfolio because uh, and make and make and I feel more confident that I can show okay this is a sample from my work and I can grade myself. On as you can see, oh well, during my freelance, I also did my own personal branding and my identity design. Uh, where I did a lot of brand design for companies, 
um, and uh, startup companies and SMEs. Agilita is the first ever logo that I designed and they are still using it now. The clinic is in Publica. When every time I pass by it, I will be like, ah, oh, my first logo. So, you know, like your first work being out there, uh, uh, that is something that always will strike <laughs> something inside of you. Um, others are like just small companies like uh, a bakery, new in, and I try different, different kind of um, industry to expand my creative skill. So um, as my portfolio, okay, one thing about being a freelancer is you get a freedom, you control your time. Uh, okay, I will wake up at 10 a.m. and do my work. So you need, really, really need to be responsible and independent on how you manage your time because it's your own. So respect your client time as well. The deadline, if the deadline is by 15 of November, made it by 15 of November. So one thing about being um, a freelancer is you're not just producing creative, but you also have business skills. Business skills meaning um, how do you manage your business documentation? Uh, when a client requests something, you have to create an estimate. After an estimate, they agree, um, um, sign it off, you do the work, and then you have to invoice them. Um, only after invoice can payment be made. So understanding this business skills um, is what going to make or break your freelancer journey because if you're doing all the work but not getting paid, it's not going to work and it will be really, really devo um, demotivating. And like, because you're on, you are your own boss, if you made a lot of effort, there'll be more jobs coming in, more rewards, uh, more uh, business. But if you are uh, lack of effort, nothing is coming in. So it's all on you. You are responsible for your own uh, income. And then another thing, multitasking. You have to do everything A to Z because you're a freelancer. If you're taking jobs like um, um, designing a business card, you do the design, you have to meet the printer, get the printer, and even deliver it to your client. So uh, you're not just being in front of the computer, but you're also going to be the marketer to make your service heard among um, your future clients or a prospect clients. You also need to do create content um, right now like social media, TikTok, so people are aware about your services. So these are the kind of things that a freelance um, need to have. Second, um, after a few years, uh, um, I get a business partner and have my own design studio which is called chemistry design we have a small studio at a shop lot in Sri Kembangan at that time and our clients got bigger through words of mouth um, we got bigger client and have a more uh, longer campaign so the campaign can last to up to four to five months and i even have uh, a couple of staff joining the team to help uh, um, on developing the projects. So the things that needed as a freelancer earlier, um, also being um, a business owner or design studio, but there will be more <laughs> um, add-ons which is higher overhead. Overhead is the expenses needed for a business because I have a office, so I have to pay the rent office. I have a staff. I have to ensure that I can pay my staff every month. And one thing about having a business is to think sustainability means how do I need to keep the business uh, going every month and also to make uh, it grow. So this is another aspect of business skills that is really, really needed to equip yourself in having a business.
business is that entrepreneurial skill, not only managing your business, but managing uh, your team. So at the same time, I did a few years. I also um, run a few startups by the side to have another source of revenue uh, for the company. Like um, Wedding Kami was one of my startup where I did an online interactive wedding card. And this is back in 2010, uh, where Facebook doesn't have events yet, um, the event function, or even WhatsApp, you can't um, have the uh, so much features as you do now. And back then we even go to MDAC uh, to get some funding, but our ideas were rejected saying that, oh, uh, people don't give a uh, wedding website uh, or people still want, you know, a wedding card invitation, kena jumpa, kena jumpa. that is our tradition, that is our culture. We were rejected like that. But I guess we were just too early with this idea. Uh, the recent COVID happened and we see all of these solutions popping up and my business partner back then were even in a uh, uh, pitching, business pitching project where they, the one who won that business pitching had a similar um, idea like us. So sometimes ideas are just too early <laughs> for people to accept. But during doing this, um, as a startup, we need to source for funding to make it grow. So that was also a challenge, but it was really, really fun experimenting with ideas and seeing how far it can go. But ours were just too early. Okay, so after all this business uh, freelancing, uh, I took a big pivot for my career. Uh, because at that time, um, I need to pay my study loan. <laughs> um, and because some lawyers were already chasing me and everything. So I need something stable, um, and a bit of high, higher salary to compensate that. So I make this pivot is because of a major life decision. Uh, and being an in-house designer, um, I got an offer um, in an oil and gas company as a creative designer um, back then. So now the second phase, which is um, an in-house designer. One thing about in-house designer, it's where a company that does not do creative or content creation as their major business. So these are company which have other uh, activities for, for, for example, oil and gas, like if other corporate companies like telecom, um, like TM, their main business is telecommunication, but they do have an in-house creative team. Um, other examples like um, IBM, or even Google in the IT industry, um, Google, Meta, Instagram, all these companies have their own in-house creative team. And I think now, um, like all the e-commerce company like Lazada, Shopee, uh, they have a very, very strong creative team as well. So there are many different industry for in-house. Uh, but one thing, when you're an in-house designer, you are just serving that company and not any other kind of industry. So if me being in August, all my content development, uh, the content that I design are oil and gas related. If you are, for example, um, in Shopee, Lazada, Zalora, you'll be just designing um, e-commerce um, things like sh selling all your products. So it's very industry specific. I started my career in okay the company here <laughs> as a creative designer like graphic and I did a lot of brand advertising because one thing about okay 
the size of the company also matters like uh, Petronas here is 50,000. Uh, there's 50,000 staff with offices worldwide, I think around 20, 30 uh, offices worldwide is that the HQ headquarters is here in Kuala Lumpur. So I have to uh, like that time I was in the upstream business where I cater lots of our international offices. So you don't, you won't see my work here local domestically, but I did a lot for our office like um, Sudan, Vietnam, um, Canada, Canada um, many us in Southeast Asia region and um, Africa. So I did um, a Christmas ad for Sudan or South Sudan at the time. I directed the photo shoot concept and everything. And this was, a, um, I think CSR for Myanmar. Another one, um, Independence Day for, for South Sudan. So of course I did not fly there. Uh, we sent a photographer and I said, okay, I want a shot like this. So he will uh, take the shot. And I ensure that the whole design are according to our brand guideline. Okay, one thing about being a designer, you need to be really, really passionate about what you're doing. But also this apply not just being designer in whatever um, career that you wanna um, delve into, because th there'll be challenges that you face, but the one who's going to push you forward, who's going to wake you up for another day, uh, another day is your passion. So there are times that I have to stay back, stay up and work in a dark office up until 2.30 a.m. completing a design. Um, but, you know, because I really love what I'm doing and it really excites me um, to keep like design um, layout at the time. I think this time I was Oh, okay. Now I remember the project. Um, it was a guest interactive project, and our this is me designing the infographic poster. Uh, and nearing deadline, one thing I need to, as a designer, we need to get it done to reach the deadline. So, um, another thing about being an in-house designer, sometimes the team are really small. You're you're not in a big team, so you have to do end to end from m ensuring the content um like dissecting and really trying to understand the technical content like for me because i'm an online guy so the content are very technical i receive a slide i think this is like about 30 40 slides of technical content and my client that time went oh can you turn this into something interesting so when it's really really hard for me to understand all this <laughs> But it's, it's actually talking about um, um, how gas can really, really reduce emission um, to help reduce climate change. So from, from this slide, I come up with a concept sketch. And then from concept sketch, we did a 3D rendering. But 3D rendering, I have another team who did it. And then the final outcome is this. It's an interactive screen. Um, so the technical information just now are displayed in this manner. And here's talking about like how gas contribute to our nation, things like that. Okay, so like for me, like really what keep push me going is to see the end line, like what I'm going to be produced later. And after seeing this, it still makes me really, really proud and makes me excited. Okay, what's the next project that I can work on? And then another skills that you need to have is your communication skill. When I mentioned your communication skill is 
like how do you convey your idea ideation your creative concept because one thing i see that many designers um would um that really really hinder their growth is not figure out maybe like copy or not articulate enough in um, conveying their ideas so this communication skill really really will push you forward because to make your ideas heard to make your client or your team um, confident with how to develop the things that you want to do so yes at first i was um, really an introvert and scared, but it takes time. Like for me, if you're not confident in presenting, start by just presenting um, among your team, only then to your department and then up to your division. So take many, many steps. Don't just sit at the back, um, sit at the corner and um, let others present uh, for you because you're the one th that needs to shine okay. um, and then from communication skills that's where you get a lot of opportunities so i uh get the opportunity to meet, attend many events and exhibition because from just now i did branding and advertising and then I venture to events and exhibition for the company where I design the whole uh, exhibition booth, the poster that needs to be in it and the activities, the interactive activities. So I was in Paris, Abu Dhabi, Perth, Bangkok, and I designed like the, <laughs> this is an augmented reality of our K5 platform at that time and PFLNG. And then this was the interactive script that you um, seen earlier. And this was the whole booth. And me, this is me during the construction site. And this is after the exhibition ended. So from being branding advertising, I still design and everything. Um, of course, uh, with my team at this, I think I have grown to an, from one person designer to two people. Um, we still design the posters and everything, but it gotten bigger to not just on printed, but the whole environment and experience in an exhibition booth. And this was a virtual reality of our F1 car, uh, F1 race. Another interactive. Um, it's an interactive tech wall that explains about our technologies. So people just click on the wall and there's a projection mapping. So the concept was, the original concept was just doing a, a poster. But I say poster, people not going to read everything when there's too much information. So what if we hide the information when only people click, it shows through projection mapping. So these are the ideas that I really, really try to push to the management and convince them and even show other examples that are done by um, other companies and showing um, best practices can really convince um, your management. Okay, so yeah, communication skills can provide you many opportunities. So don't just be the designer that stay behind the computer but also push your design um, further by convincing others that um, it can work um, third tips is stay consistent and never give up because in my university in my class there were like 60 of us up until today i think the only I think only less than 10 that are still in the creative industry, but this 10 are doing really, really, really well. So um, one thing that 
just now, as you can see, when I start as graphic branding, advertising, doing events and exhibition, and then I moved to doing interactive, um, which is uh, virtual reality. So I'm not just a designer who sits behind the computer, but also going down the line. And I did my license um, to go to offshore platform where I need to write um, a boat for five to six hour um, on the sea. And as you can see in the toilet, there will be a sign saying that jika hendak muntah, sila muntah ke dalam uh, lubang tandas. So many people get really, really seasick in that six hour boat ride. Um, but this is something that I just have to go through to get the perfect content for my virtual re reality. Um, because PFLNG that time was situated 160 km in the middle of the sea. Um, and the only way to get there is through the, this <laughs> six hour boat, right? Um, and I need to record the 360 environment of the ship as part of the VR content. And, and the outcome, okay, sorry. Okay, of course, this was the prime minister back then. We don't look to, up to him now, but it was the video and the content that um, were produced were featured in social media and even mentioned by the prime minister at that time. Uh, and I love seeing people's reaction because the PFNG was really, really high and he have to hold on to it. <laughs> then after being um, interactive design, because interactive design is about experience. Um, I get the opportunity to do UI UX, uh, UI UX, as you know, is um, designing user interface and user experience for digital platform. At that time, I need to design um, a mobile app and a digital platform for our plant maintenance um, in uh, Petronas. So I get to go and interview people and learn the UI, which is totally different from graphic. Visual is maybe like 50%, but I love the fact about UI is how you turn visual into something that is practical. Um, like, you know, like the different color state when you, you click enter, people know um, the down state, up state, the light color, the dark color. So that's the design part. But like um, one thing about design UI UX is for me, is the most high level of design because you need to really, really understand your users, your customers, your people, and do develop a design that can meet their needs. Just like Massimo uh, um, earlier when he designed the train subway, uh, New York subway map, because he designed something that is practical and um, can be understand, so people will use it. So. For me, that's the same with UI UX design. So as you can see in my career journey, I started as a graphic designer um, and then doing brand advertising events and exhibition designer. But of course, in between that, I need to learn, sorry, uh, more about a bit of video motion as well when creating content. Uh, I did wedding card illustrator when I did my start wedding card company. Sorry, this animation. Dear on the loop for that. Jump to the slide. Uh, I video design, like edit video as well. And after venturing to all design disciplines and understand all types of design uh, platform, um, now. Um, I lead a team of seven designers. So the creative career path, um, I know this is just a very, very um, rough summary. I would need another another hour to explain like the, the different, different path. But like there's um, one thing that I did not add in is also um, more like education path where you want to become um, a lecturer and everything, but now I'm touching more on um, the professional path. So if being an entrepreneur, um, you will have a social creative satisfaction because you get to choose your clients. But sometimes 
<laughs> you have to listen to your clients on the stability and the care growth like stability it really really depends on your effort how well your business grow and the career growth because being in the same business you really really need to, to stick and stay consistent in what you do but you get really the freedom in what time you want to wake up when you want to do work but also you have to work 24 7 sometimes to make your business life for our agency a design studio Okay, because you serve many multiple clients, different, different industry. So there's a very, very high creative satisfaction. Today, you will design for a sport brand. The next day, you will design for a um, F&B uh, product that maybe a um, few months later, you need, you get to design for uh, like a fashion brand. So you really, your design and creative skills will be really, really uh, challenged to the max with this different design brief. And if you are looking for something that is a variety, so agency and design studio would be the best for you. But as an in-house designer, you will stick to only designing for the company. So your content or subject from <laughs> the 365 days is just that company um, subject, like for me, oil and gas, just oil and gas. If you work in telecommunication like TM, it's just all about telco. If you work like Southcom uh, or DG, if you work in like e-commerce, all the products that you need to sell. So it's very, very specific to the business or products um, where you the company you're working on. But in terms of stability, for agencies design to you, you earn your uh, monthly salary but whatever in-house designer because it's a company and it really depends the size of the company is the benefits that company benefits that you get such as medical um, um, other compensation like um, bonus things like that in terms of career growth for agency design studio um, it's about the same there'll be from a junior designer you can be a senior designer um, a creative director for agency design studio or a creative head and then in terms of freedom for agency design studio, because you take in a lot of clients, different, different brief, sometimes um, it's really, really um, low on work life balance. But if you're really passionate and want to build up portfolio, agency design studio would be a good start. But for in house designer, um, the freedom is not, of course, you need to work on a nine to five job. Um, but there's still an annual leave sometimes it's more than an agency and design studio so there this is like back to what you want to um uh main priority in life um why i jumped to in-house designer because i have a very high debt that i need to pay off but after i i've already paid off thankfully but i, I i'm still looking forward to back to design uh, open up my studio when um opportunity arise or even jump into a different industry later on so it really goes back to you what you want to do what are your priorities okay and then um a few last words before i, I think i just have another more 10 minutes um never stop learning just because you have graduated it doesn't mean that you have to stop learning yes um you learn on the job but sometimes you just as a designer you need to really really venture out um get to know more on what's the latest industry trends what are uh the latest features even in adobe sometimes i see <laughs> interns that join my team they still don't know um when they want to erase like a section of uh background and everything they will do close them and i say why are you doing that why are you not using content where feel where you select and the ai will cover the whole um uh, patch of that image and i hope you guys know about content where feel so that's a very very um uh, life saver feature in photoshop so even even now i still attend conferences on design um 
uh, this is the ones that I've attended, the VMAX, um, usually held in Los Angeles, um, off in Barcelona, uh, the one on the right. And um, the nearest to us is Manila, Grafica Manila in Philippines. So the VMAX was, for me, is the uh, one event that I really, really want to go in. I was a student, but I get to, I have to work for like, I think five, six years only to get to go to opportunity to Adobe Max. I was sponsored by Adobe, uh, through my works um, in Rega and sharing and everything. So I get to meet many of my design idol. So for Malaysian that, that year was presented by me and Ramesh, he's a Photoshop guru, if you know him. Um, and then like I met, uh, my uh favorite designer lauren holmes he did a lot of typography art so um check her out um later i will show you her instagram so one thing about adobe max is the most premier creative conference attended by thirty thousand designers all around the world so it's going for three days if you follow my instagram um i have an Instagram highlights on this Udomi Max, so you can see the things I do, the the, the talks that I go to, uh, to learn more about the different design disciplines. So, luckily, if you subscribe to original Adobe, you have access to Adobe Max um, virtually, the virtual conference. So, but since COVID, they did a virtual um, event. It's always held in October annually. So the next conference is off was in Barcelona. Um, I think they also have virtual it's that organized in May annually. So it's a bit like the VMAX, but a smaller scale version. And Grafica, even Grafica is just like a one day or two day event, but they invite international designers. And this was Aaron Daplin. Um, I love his work on brand and um, corporate identity development. I managed to bring a group of my colleagues, friends, um, for to attend Grafica Manila. So, I mean, in ticket you murah je for Ajak Adobe Max, I think ticket you about lima ribu. Okay, maybe out of student budget, but Grafica Manila, I think if you can go to a concert, you can go to Grafica Manila. The cost for ticket, I think it's like seratus ringgit lebih, seratus to ratus. So try to get the opportunity to, to go there. And lastly, my, uh, oh, okay. I have another two, five fifty is mentor support for guidance um, and encouragement. So I think you guys are lucky because now these, there are many platforms for you guys to get, um, mentor support to give you even career guidance or even you're stuck on a decision okay which path should i go in my career or when you are at work and you are stumbled into a dilemma mentor could really help you because they have a lot of experience um and they can provide you that guidance even i have a mentor uh, for my career um uh, is asri uh uh my career mentor is asri he's the designer who designed Petronas logo, uh, Mas logo, Malaysia logo, and he's the person that will go to my work. So, um, some of the platforms out there that have this mentoring um, um, platform is edplist.org. It's free. Uh, you, can, you guys can, can sign up. And there's a lot of designers globally who provide So book a session at a topic that you want to talk about. Sometimes it's like for me, I provide um, a 40, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So you can, if you want a one on one session with me, you can sign up to ADP list and just look up my name and see available slots. And then locally in Malaysia, we have futurelab.my and this is more on a local context. If you want to know on um, to get career advice. So um, ADP list and future lab. And lastly, uh, just stay passionate in what you're doing uh, and keep on creating because these are 
the things that makes me happy where I get to create and design. And I hope you guys can continue to do what you love as well. Okay. That's all my presentation now. Now I open up to Q&A. Okay, thank you, Che uh, and Malina, for the um, fruitful knowledge and knowledge sharing. So um, I'm opening the the floor to the um, students here in um, Webex. Please, um, do you have any question to ask? Any mentoring question or um, something that you are concerned about? Concerned or interested to hear about how she um, venture from um, a certain types of design to the next, maybe from freelance to in house designer to entrepreneur. Uh, any question? I think probably they're writing down. Some questions. Is there a chat room? Is there a chat room that? Uh, uh, there's a chat box here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it should be. Oh, okay, my Zul, a Fendi, I ask some question. I think so. Okay, so my Zul. Okay, one. Okay. Most probably heard about the death of graphic design because of emerging technology and the impact of graphic design, which more and more people use technology, creating graphic design layout using the apps, yep. companies looking for ways to save time. Uh, company service online, which allows people to get work faster. Okay, that one. And then the question is, how can we as graphic designer handling this emerging rapid changes in industry? Okay, so thanks, alumni. Yeah. So alumni, so this will be also my super senior <laughs> looking at the date. <laughs> and yes, Asri Ama is my mentor. Um, okay, uh, yes, even my team now, we are trying to find ways on um, producing a more faster way to produce graphics and creative and find shortcuts. So like, from our team, yes, we still do stock images um, for things that needs to get done fast, um, especially for internal communication. Um, and for non-designers in the company, like the engineers who needs to do design, we provide them an access to Canva. You know, Canva uh, for non-designers is a very templatized platform where you can just pick and choose all this um, shapes, graphics, um, illustration. So basically for us, it's not easy but yes, things are getting faster. That's why, um, as you can see in my career journey, I just don't stick into graphic design. I expand my skill to other form of design disciplines. And from like there, um, there's many other things that can be developed that for a person who does not have design background, could not even create it. So graphic design here are not just doing logo and everything, but no, that knowledge is still valuable that even the latest uh, technology like Canva can do because that need, they need a creative idea that is fresh, not like a templatized design. So from my design background, that's why I could do um, that exhibition design, um, um, UI UX design. So just how technology has evolved, us as a designer also has need to be evolved by venturing to other design disciplines. I hope that answer your question, Maizul. Okay, there's a few more questions coming. <laughs> oh, fine. Yes, the problem challenges, Lalu. I want I the design want... tomorrow. <laughs> I want the um. It's also I think it's always 
managing the client it, that is always i find it challenging up until now and this is where you need i'm learning like really interpersonal skill um negotiation negotiation skill it's a bit outside design but in is a form of communication as well on how do you manage expectation how do you set um guideline and process to people to understand so in the internal clients that I have to handle, um, I created a process and guideline. Okay, if you want this design, give us five days or not, if not gonna work. So by establishing this process, people are more aware. Um, and managing expectation, like um, if you cannot complete within the deadline, try to negotiate, sorry, we could not meet your requirement with this, this timeline. But if you want this type of quality, we need another three days. So. It's about negotiation as well. And this, again, this you can learn throughout your experience. How do I find my mentor? I think my mentor is going to all these design events. Um, and I was like, uh, that's how I stumbled upon um, by Asri. And it is important to keep you um, aligned or give you that push and guidance sometimes like they will give you a bigger perspective on things because they have more experience like Asri I think he's have like more than 40 years of experience okay sorry my back fell down um so having a mentor will like that kaka or abang in the industry uh that can give you advice when you are stuck um and also is it that support that maybe your friends your circle of friends may not have compared to someone who are experienced in the industry there's a question at the top how do you handle creative blocks how do i handle creative blocks that's why i go to the, all these design events <laughs> <laughs> really 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 seriously it really really opened my eye and then i will save all this um website links or follow all this uh my design idols and everything in instagram or linkedin um that's how i try to break away from my creative blocks or sometimes creative blocks also happens when you are really really burnt out that's where you need to understand yourself more and take a break. Me taking a break is by a weekend surfing in chatting. So that's how I escape my mental uh, creative block. Oh, so you do surfing uh, more? Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> so do your I'm, hobby. I'm, yes. <laughs> like, okay. About the creative that they want, no, something like that. Like just now I said like being passionate, yes, it's good, but sometimes have a supplementary things that you love in case your creative or designing um, are um, burning you out. So try to escape to another avenue and then come back. Yes. Okay, which one have we not seen? How some of the client use to not pay the end or try to nego the price. How okay. do we manage these kinds of issue? Okay, so this is where your documentation is really, really important. Um, when um you should send the estimate or quotation make sure the client signed it um and have a tnc below it of when they need to pay so they will be this will be your legal documentation when doing business so jangan just have one thing being designers macam just trust verbal communication oh okay uh harga ni lima puluh ringgit you don't have any black and white so have that prepared earlier okay so make sure prepare a legal document a black and white before you pass mm -hmm. before you pass your digital copy or something like yes. that. yes yeah. yes have right. a black and white agreement okay okay so next one how to manage client who only relies on their design even though designer explain why they should not consider the particular design should we just proceed with the client request or drop the project which one is advisable <laughs> so this is where being a freelancer 
it's either you want the money <laughs> or not. So these are the kind of clients who just wants how they want. Uh, even though we have tried our best to design, uh, provide consultation the best way to design. So I just get the payment, whatever, but will not include it in my portfolio. Yeah, I think so, I agree with you with that, Juga. <laughs> it's either, it's either uh, about your money or the art or the aesthetic mm -hmm. value, can. Yeah. Okay. The next question is: Have you ever experienced a bottleneck or a hard moment as a graphic designer? Yes. Sure. Of course. Um. Um. I do like when I show the challenges that I face, um, throughout my career. So sometimes I feel, why am I doing this? <laughs> but I think. Like that passion is the one who really, really keeps me going. Um, this also goes back to being burnt out when you already start questioning uh, uh, the bottleneck. And I also will address this as part of the mental stress uh, question. Uh, it's like when you already facing a um, bottleneck, facing um creative block or stressed out is just all are a sign of burnout means that you are really really pushing yourself to the max to the point that there's no breathing space for yourself so this is why is you really really need to draw a boundary or draw the line to know to get a step back um like as a freelance or being in business that might be hard because you really, really, really need to keep the business going. But be uh, in a company annual leave to take a break uh, from all the deadlines and the projects that you are working from. So really, really, really try to understand yourself when you need to take that step back. Okay. Uh, okay. So for another question, if you could go back in time, what would you change or choose differently? Have you answered How that question? Would... How would you choose if you go, if you want to go back in time, lah, but you keep saying that you love designing. So would you go back in time and change that if you could? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you still, yeah, yeah. You are in the position where you are. Well, this is yeah, what I think, you want. Like for, for me, um, why I would change is not staying in the company for so long. Oh, I uh, uh, okay. Like, yeah, I've been mean 10 years. You have, have your own business? Like, I already have business. Yeah. I want to try different industry. For, for me to jump now, because I've been oil and gas for so long, so I don't have a variety of experience. So it's hard for me to jump around. So what I would change is maybe try different industry every five years, but that's for me lah. Yeah. So for starting, don't jump yep. once you yes. you're in there. Tak sampai lagi setahun and then you want to jump, jangan lah. Get yeah. the experience. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Yes, correct. Because <laughs> when I interview uh, designers, I really look at Zoom and see their experience. If they don't last last more than one year then there will be must be something wrong <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah okay. interesting okay next question was there any challenges you faced when you were a freelancer Ooh. um yeah um like in all my roles um there's always challenges but as a freelancer um again it's of course managing client um you have to be really at a level where uh, you get to choose who you want to work with or your client. At the start, I just accept everyone. And that's where I get clients like, I not design Popeye is a ketchup brand. I not Popeye, I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> uh, Gamba Popeye, uh, pegang my bottle ketchup. And I was like, no, no, no. But again, 
these are the clients that you get when you just accept everyone. Um, the challenges that I face is um, opinion again, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, managing client, uh, ensuring that um, the payment, I get the payment once the job complete. So over, over the years, you get, before accepting a job, you already know if it's a good or bad client. So um, it's just that when you fall or you uh, face any failure, it's also an opportunity for you to learn. If you do not go through that setbacks you or challenges, you will not um, get that experience. Okay, next to uh, Maizo. Um, I understand because you're very senior, so you would know about Rega. Um, as I mentioned, I was ex Rega ex co member as well. Um, the contribution to graphic graph Rega during my time was more on a very high industry level, and sometimes in university level, what we have done are just collaborating with universities and giving talks like this, but from the years I was in was really contributing in setting the, um, I think the syllabus or technical standards, it was another team lah. But for now, I, yes, I don't see an executive because I'm not in it anymore. So you can go to Rega FB page uh, to uh, get more information from them. Um, yes, next, Changwei K. Yes, the design career is really, really broad. Um, when I decide, it's also like what I feel and share more. Yes, I started as graphic, but after a while, I get tired with graphic and then I feel, what do I want to do next? So I want to brand advertising. Um, so I will try to do some brand work, advertising work. Only then opportunity comes in. Um, so I don't jump. When I jump on different design disciplines, I jump when I am am ready. Not like, oh, I want to try that, jump. But it's more on a very, very uh, quickly <laughs> decision. After I have gained enough knowledge on that new design discipline, only then I will jump. But again, before deciding, you also need some interest. If you want to do UI UX design, why you want to do UI UI? At least have some interest before coming in. And that interest will also lead for you to understand more about that different design discipline. Okay. Um... Um, have you gone through most? We've gone through most of the question, is it? Um, there's a question from another page. Uh, I've posted how important or relevant to follow design trends. It is important and relevant. Um, it really depends on uh, your industry. But when you in very highly competitive industry, for example, like um, e-commerce or um, FMCG, FMCG, fast moving consumer goods, like um, Nestle products and everything, knowing the latest design trends is also making your design fresh, new and relatable. You don't want to, did something designed that are back in the early 2000s, but when the trend now it's something like uh, more minimalistic. Even if you see logo development like Starbucks, Apple, things are getting more simplified and minimalistic. Suddenly, you come up with a logo that is flashy with glossy effect and shadow. Era more about um, and um, for you to be more relatable as well. That's why you're sticking to the trend. Um, and 
say Adam, um, yes, there's a lot of graphic designers in Malaysia who are not from design background. Um, for me, having a degree or diploma, you don't need it to be as a rec recognizable designer. Just like any other musicians, they don't need to study in music. They just have the talent, create content, and they can be um, an influential musician, YouTuber, artist. But if you want to work in a company, they would require a degree, a diploma. So do you want to be just a rec recognizable designer or do you want to be a designer that get um, or you want to be it as a profession so for this designer who made their name there's of course a lot of work to be done um, more on self-branding so that's what uh, they're good at and I also have friends who I know I have friends who are not um qualified academically but they're really good designers it's just that when they work in a company they could not survive because um they are not used to in a very structured environment compared to us who are studying um um in a from an education background How many years at least that we need to before jump to another company for us to gain more gaji? I think the best is three years. Oh, there's more question coming in now. <laughs> um, three years to yes. stay in a company. Uh, next question, any advice for young designer trying to be art director? <laughs> art director so that is one thing that many junior designers come to me and say what do you want to be I want to be art director why so okay one thing about being art direction or creative director more of being at a leadership level is you really really need to understand the whole spectrum of design not just graphic unless you are a company who just really really, really do graphic design but usually even in agency or in an in-house become in leadership position is um you really really need to understand design end to end and not just graphic one thing another thing is doing design or maybe just like 40% of your work, 60% is more on managing projects and also managing the people who's going to create and produce the artworks. So that's another leadership skills that you need to have in how to communicate effectively to your team, how to establish teamwork. So that is when you are at the director level. Yes, oh, another comment by Maizol. Yeah, Muet Latif was also, Arwa Muet Latif was also one of my dearest friend um, and mentor because he's also a designer working in a corporate environment, in house designer. So he's our office also nearby and um, he's one of the talented designer who also ventured to in house for uh, a more corporate environment and um, stability. Okay, great. <laughs> I think um, I think he said his answer to say Adam. Oh, okay. What did say Adam ask? Yeah, I what did say Adam ask? I see a lot of famous graphic designer in Malaysia who don't even have a high degree, but they have made a name for themselves at the highest level. So is it important to have a degree or diploma to be recognizable designer? Okay. Yeah, Muit Latif does have a degree, um, even though he's a uh, sculpture student, but he's from education background. And that's why he can work as a designer in Bank Negara. Yeah, I think as you mentioned just now, um, a, a person that doesn't have a background education in design, they probably uh, have difficulty to stay in the in-house because of yeah. the structure, 
the process mm -hmm. that they have to go yep. through. Okay. But unless if the person have a uh, sort of an education background, they went to um, a process of learning, they probably can adjust themselves. Is that yep. is right? That, okay. Yes, correct. It's also like when you're degree, you tend to be in group work, you know, like adapting to different, different characters. <laughs> so that, that teamwork, I think for people who are um, the ones who I see design influences is really, they, they are good in working on their own instead of working in the team. All right. So teamwork is important. Eh? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> when, especially when you have a really, really huge campaign or projects. Yeah. Okay. So that's part of um, answering the art direction as well. If they mm -hmm. want, if you, if a student uh, ambitions is art direction or art director, they have to understand how to work with a team yep. and kind of characteristics, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is a, another question. Last. last question, I, I think. Uh -huh. um, is it necessary for graphic designer to develop their own design style since most of the time they need a design based on client's needs? What advice would you give to us? For me, this like design style um, is more on creating your art. Um, it's more on personal branding. But when it comes to client's work, this is where you really, really need to be versatile and meet their requirement. So having our own, our design style is more on for our own personal uh, branding on our artwork. But when you are designing for a client, um, it's more of getting to understand their requirements. So sometimes, yes, um, when you say design style, there are some illustrators, um, they have a specific design style. Clients will get um, this kind of illustrator to do their work, but you are really, really limiting yourself because you portray just that this specific deal. So maybe, once in a blue moon, you get clients who want your design style. But if you are a versatile designer, you will have more opportunities to try on different projects. So that's the difference. And lastly, important tips about teamwork is like really, really trying to get to know character, different, different types of character and how each of character, um, understanding the strength of each character and personalities and how it can really, really contribute to the final goal of a project. Okay. As Manari is so. <laughs> <laughs> Means understand people lah kan? Kalau last time there's yeah, a cartoon, yeah. apa yang penting kerja sama. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. So okay. I guess there, like the question were asked uh, on many, many different topics. It's really, really hard to expand it in this short little time. So if you guys wanted to learn more, uh, try to book session through ADP list <laughs> for one on one mentoring. Oh, okay. There's a mentor um, site from this, uh, your slide today. Yeah. I think we, We'll yeah. get that from you later and then I can pass around the link so you can okay. um, check it out and have one-on-one -on -one mentorship. Uh, are the payment yeah. <laughs> Do they have to pay anything? No, it's free. They... It's free. It's free. Okay. Uh, so later I'll get the link from that um, website. If you got the link, just go, go there and try to find any designer mentor. And you can go uh, uh, brush yourself. So for, yes. for students, um, we, are, we are coming to the end of this session. Thank you everyone for coming in. And uh, to get your CSD, 
please um, uh, scan this QR code. And for staff, uh, if you if there's a staff in here today, um, please scan uh, using your USM passport eh, to get the uh, CPD. All right. Um, so we'll wait for a while so everybody to uh, get the coding. I mean, scan their QR code. If you're using your mobile phone, I think you can still scan, right? Okay, my question pula. I tiba tiba teringat a question. So, uh, <laughs> okay. this, is, uh, this is my part lah, because most of the students asking about their career path, but uh, are there some people are talking about the trends, the futures, and then uh, with all these uh, mentor designers and Rega, uh, I noticed there's a slight changes now. Have you, is there like more technology in the graphics design? Um, in terms of technology means that other AI, the VR, and, and like everybody is starting to go into that. Is that still graphic design term or is more expand now? Because you're in the, you always go to the Adobe event. Like, like regardless. Yeah, what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's ha happening? For now, <laughs> like um, for graphic, Graphic is just a visual, but everything has evolved more into experience design. Mm -hmm. um, so it means like designing something that is practical for people to use usability. That's where all this metaverse come in, um, VR, AR, um, and everything. So graphic does play a part in all these different platforms, more on the visual. But in order for us to evolve more, that's why it's better to um, to in being and having the skill from this all this different design discipline. That's why you can create something that is um, bigger than just a logo or a visual. Uh, so means uh, uh, it's more on the experience rather than a technical skill that the designer um, have to do. Um, like what I mean by experience when we design something is for people to use, um, rather than for people just to see. That's how I see how design has evolved. Okay. So like before this graphic design are just something that is printed mm -hmm. on a poster, on uh, magazines and uh, newspaper, but now magazine and newspaper, who does? Who does it? No. Um, there's no more. Yeah, where you can in terms of digital people subscribe to um like the edge online. So in terms of creating all this creative content instead of just designing for print, design on how does a user um read all this content and how you place all the in the digital platform so people don't just consume the visual but they experience it okay so that's a very good tip for um everyone to understand yeah mm -hmm. i mean especially the students yeah. lah yeah so, so i know you guys are mostly are from graphic background but i see like even i myself i'm venturing to you are you Someone asking about barcodes. Are the uh, barcode problem? Ka?
So I think my last advice before we end the talk is don't stick to one design discipline, be a multidisciplinary designer. But if you want to stick to one, be really, really damn good at it that no one can replicate your work. at my internet thank you so much okay um so we'll pass back to jit <laughs>